Welcome back to Garage Science. Uh, this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use the mask generator software. This software is for DLP 3D printers and what it's for is creating tailored grayscale masks and these grayscale masks will allow you to even out the light intensity across the build area on your DLP printer. And so if you require different exposure times depending on where you are on the build area of your printer, uh, this is going to even out those exposure times so that way you can use your entire build area and get an even amount of exposure all the way across. If you haven't seen my YouTube channel already, you can click on the banner. And in case maybe you stumbled upon this video without downloading the software, maybe you haven't uh, worked with the software yet, uh, this button will take you to this video uh, on my YouTube channel. Alright, so we'll go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, first, the parameters you're going to put in is going to be your projector's native resolution. We're going to work with a kind of a, a example projector for this, and we're going to give it a resolution of 800 by 600. And then your horizontal and vertical margins. Uh, so as we build this grayscale, uh, we're going to take uh, samples within your build area and these samples aren't going to be necessarily or they don't have to be right on the edges of your build area so the the horizontal and vertical margins you can't think about it as the margins when you're uh, printing a document on a piece of paper is basically the amount uh, into the image where you are leaving as blank space so we'll go ahead and select that as being two millimeters and the overall build area we'll just take as a a multiple of 10 for our resolution so we'll set it as 80 and 60 millimeters now the width of your sample uh, what we're going to do is build a matrix of samples for uh, exposure times across your build area and what this width of your sample is, is we're basically taking a square a small square out of your build area and saying this square has uh, some exposure time associated with it and then what that allows the program to do is interpolate uh, the amount of grayness you need to even out the exposure for that area and the surrounding area for that sample. And so basically, if you think about like printing a column uh, in your build area like that's a square, uh, basically what's the side length for that square? And so we're, we're going to go ahead and take this as two millimeters. And then columns of data, we're going to use four columns of data and four rows of data. So uh, like I said, we're going to use a matrix of samples and so we're basically going to take a four by four matrix of samples. That's what we're saying here. We're going to take four columns and four rows. The max allowable grayness is going to be the value that you determine is going to be the grayness required to change the areas of your build area that require the least amount of exposure in order to bring those exposure times down to the same amount as whatever the either normal or greatest exposure times are. So we're gonna go ahead and select that as being 100. So uh, the value does need to be between zero and 255, and that's because of the 16-bit um, color scheme that's uh, being used. And so uh, you do have to pick a, a value between that uh, and then the box directly underneath gives you a preview of how gray that grayness is. So you can easily change that and it will update it. And the closer you get to 255, the more white it gets. All right, so we will take that as being 100. It will provide a good example. Uh, next is going to be interpolation method. Uh, by default, uh, this works uh, using an, a linear interpolation method. Uh, there are maybe some options in the future to use an exponential and a trinomial uh, method for interpolating, but as of right now, uh, it just uses a linear interpolation method and these options are not available. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to enter our data. So we'll go ahead in here and click on our enter data button. And now this four by four matrix that we said we wanted uh, pops up here for us to input our data. So we're going to go ahead and enter that. Uh, this is going to be data in milliseconds, and that is going to be the required exposure time for a sample in that area of your build platform. So if you imagine you have a 
an 80 by 60 millimeter build area with two millimeter margins on the top and bottom and left and right side. And then within that, there's a four by four matrix of samples evenly spaced that are two millimeters by two millimeters. All right, so those two millimeter by two millimeter samples are gonna be these exposure times. So we're gonna take those exposure times as about 1,000, and we'll work this up to 4,000 milliseconds, or four seconds. All right, so we have our data in, and the way you can uh, interpret uh, the data that we have here, as we're saying in the bottom right corner, it takes four seconds to cure resin in that uh, corner of the build area. And in the top left corner, it only takes one second. So there's a fairly large gradient uh, between the bottom right and top left, and then also between the uh, top right and bottom left. And so there's basically this low spot that's sort of trickling into uh, the rest of our build area, so where even the middle of the build area takes uh, twice as long to cure the resin than it does on the edges. So we want to uh, basically gray out the edges, the, the leftmost edge and the top edge, so that way those exposure times are the same as the exposure time for the bottom right corner. That way the, the, the entire build area will have exposure times of four seconds. All right, so we do have our data in. Uh, if you want to get rid of your data and so you don't have to look at it, you can say done entering. And if you want to see it again, you can just say enter data and it will come back. Uh, if you change the number of columns or rows of data that you want and you uh, re-input for enter data or done entering data, it will reset your data uh, matrix and you'll have to re-enter. So just be careful about that so you don't have to do too much rework. All right, you have a couple other options here. If you create your image and then you realize like, oh, I, I put the data in uh, uh, the wrong direction or maybe you flipped it somehow, you can invert it on the x-axis or the y-axis without having to retype all the data points in. And then below that, you have your option for what type of image you would like to save. It sort of uh, goes from uh, lowest quality to highest quality. So PNG being your lossless and JPEG being uh, kind of your lowest quality. Uh, there's not a huge difference between each one of these, kind of just depends on the uh, slicer software you're using and the particular uh, picture format it wants for your mask. So we're going to go ahead and go with the PNG as a lossless, and then after that we're ready to create our mask. Once you hit create mask, it will generate it uh, almost uh, instantaneously and then automatically open it in whatever your default uh, picture viewer is. Uh, from that you can save it uh, wherever you would like. Also, you can access it from whichever folder you have your um, mask generator saved in. Uh, your grayscale will be saved in that same folder, so you can navigate it to uh, you can navigate to it that way and save it somewhere else from there. All right, so we're looking at this image. We can see uh, the bottom right corner. That's where our four second exposure time was at, and so that's white because we don't want to increase the amount of time it takes to. Ex get the exposure we need for that corner, whereas the other three corners that only have one second exposure time are grayed out to our uh, max grayness in order to bring those exposure times up to four seconds. And with this picture, you can put it into whatever a slicer software you're using, whether it be like Nano DLP or Creation Workshop, uh, and you can use this to even out the uh, light intensity on your DLP projector. Well, I hope you got a lot out of this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Let me know what you think. And if you have any suggestions for improvements to the software, if you encounter any bugs, uh, be sure to leave a comment below and let me know. Uh, I am intending to release newer versions of this if uh, there's significant uh, problems. So let me know and I will uh, continue working on it. Thanks for watching.